guys. Welcome to an all new week of So Bad It's Good. Listen, weeks are tough, but hopefully we can get you through it with some laughs and maybe point you in the right direction of things to watch or things to stay away from. Who knows? I've got one of my favorite people with us today to start us off. You've heard her on this show many times. You've probably seen her on TikTok. You've probably seen her on Instagram. I mean, she would fight this, but I call her an influencer. I mean, she works with Pinterest. She was just in an article for Vogue Business talking about the NFL having a moment because of Taylor Swift. I mean, she's a sports girly. And as you guys know, the last couple of weeks, I'm a sports girly now. So it's just two sports girlies chatting about sports and entertainment and all of that stuff. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the podcast, Lex Nico. Thank you, Lex, for being here. Hi. (laughs) That was amazing. I mean, listen, I'm a sports girly now because of Taylor Swift and this Travis Kelsey thing, Mm -hmm. but it goes so much deeper. And I'm ashamed of myself because I always said I will never get into sports. And now I'm getting into sports. Now, (laughs) here you are, Ryan, bend it like Bailey, your name. Bend it like Bailey. (laughs) <laughs> love that it's perfect yeah well i there's a note that pops up on riverside you can put in like you know your title and i put bend it like bailey because this weekend this is how into sports i am there was a, a new four-part docuseries on netflix called beckham and mm-hmm. i know david beckham because you know like i knew of like a victoria and posh spice and i knew about their relationship but i don't like sports i knew he was a soccer player but not not much more than that, but just seeing yeah, it in the where, cover stories. Where it ended. <laughs> yeah, but I got sucked into this four part docu series and I found my I texted my buddy Nick like the second episode. I said, I think I'm into soccer now. Like, why do I like sports documentaries and sports blind items and Taylor Swift? Why do I like that stuff way more than watching the actual sports? I think because you're finding an intersection between what you enjoy, which is the gossip and the culture, but then also like the pomp and circumstance of these athletes. Like these athletes are like these niche celebrities, you know, like, and David Beckham is not niche. Let's like put that on the table. Yeah, it was like niche. They're making close to billions, a billion dollars. Like Travis Kelsey was famous in his own right in the football community, but that doesn't necessarily mean that he was mainstream media, but now we're bringing them in and it opens it like unlocks this new level of celebrity and culture that you get to dissect and analyze. And that's why I think we get so caught up in it. So interesting. So I'm very, this is even good for me because I'm so (laughs) known in cheesy, cringy pop culture, but then now that I'm bringing sports into it, it just elevates my brand Uh even that much better. Like, what if you started dating a female footballer and then suddenly it's Ryan and you're the wag and oh my God, they're brought into the Bravo world. (laughs) She's in this Vogue article, you guys being interviewed, which is huge. Like, I mean, like I, like Vogue, even for me is is huge. What is wag? W-A-G. So it stands for wives and girlfriends. So wives and girlfriends of like sports people. Of sports. So it's like any athletes, it stands for wives and girlfriends of a professional athlete. So, you know, it's these women or partners, let's say, that will follow around their partner through where they're traveling, what they're doing. Because, you know, I'm sure if you, well, you did watch the entire Beckham um, docuseries, you saw like every five seconds he's moving. You know what I mean? And like, you kind of have to just go along with it. So these women... You know, Victoria is an entrepreneur in her own right, but a lot of these women just end up, you know, following their husbands with their families and they're taking care of the home and taking care of the children and they're the wags and, you know, getting well, doused in fashion. So now we put, we put Taylor Swift as a wag almost. Right. I know. Taylor Swift is like this era's Victoria no. Beckham, which is kind of fascinating. Well, no, I mean, Taylor Swift, don't you think she is, if potentially this continues, would be the most successful wag of all time? I mean, absolutely, yes. But if we're looking like 90s to now, apples to apples, when David yeah. and Victoria like got together, the Spice Girls were everything. Like, well, it's kind of crazy. to. I, I wonder if we could go back and draw some similarities. Oh, I mean, I'm sure you could. But even just financially, I'm thinking with the Spice Girls, you had to split that, that five donut ways. up five ways. <laughs> and then with Taylor, she gets like the, you know, by the way, because another story this week was I keep talking about the AMC Taylor Swift eras movie. It has a hundred million dollars in pre-sales a hun- before, even before it's released. It has a hundred million dollars of people that have already bought in tickets, which now beats Marvel movies because Marvel movies, all their pre-sale. I mean, you know, a big bunch is pre-sales, but it's that first weekend people coming out that have not bought tickets. Mm-hmm. Taylor Swift fans have bought and purchased those tickets. It's already money in the bank. So I have a question on that because I actually yeah. haven't done a ton of research like 
I will probably go see this, and I will probably go see the Beyonce one in theaters too. But oh, I already got my we, tickets for Beyonce. I already got. <laughs> are it. we getting I already anything? Got it. Are we getting anything extra in those movies, or is it simply the concert from like a very well filmed <sighs> angle? <laughs> what do you mean an extra? Do you mean like do they strap you to a chair and like bounce no, you like, around? No, like do we get any behind like... the scenes? Like you know, okay, documentary wait, wait. style. Oh, yes. So with Beyonce's Renaissance in the trailer, you see a lot of backstage footage. You see a okay. lot of the preparation. So I assume in that. But with Taylor Swift eras, I'm not sure. That's a big mystery. I, I think she would be remiss to not show us that because I think yeah. that would be cohesively a lot better in a movie. Because everybody, my big, the big argument, I was talking to my sister last night, who's a huge Taylor Swift fan. She's like, well, I saw the concert. I don't know if I want to sit and see the concert again. But I would love to see like backstage footage and more Same. like docu series, documentary type. And I was like, yeah, but I think that that'll be a surprise. I'm sure there will be, but it'll be interesting. Um, so could you explain to me with this Beckham thing? So he's mm -hmm. a footballer, you guys. He's a soccer player. He's beautiful. <laughs> the only funny thing, he has this little tiny, he's like, hey, what's going on? I'm David Beckham. How you doing? Like he has this really tiny, you expect like, because he's so like kind of manly. Yeah, he's like, I've got a soft voice. I love Victoria. He <laughs> seems obsessed with Victoria from like day one. The the problems in his soccer career, it almost gets pushed towards Victoria where the soccer managers and, you know, like they kind of blamed her for mm -hmm. every mistake that David made. Um, but then could you draw that line of his son, Brooklyn, is now married to uh, who, who's, who's he married? Nicola Nic Peltz. Nicola Peltz. Nicola Peltz, who comes from a billionaire family, mm -hmm. and she gets a lot of heat in the press, I've noticed. Um, and there's like um, supposedly bad blood between Victoria and Nicola. Isn't that interesting, though? Because I would say like, well, wouldn't they get along because they were very similar in the sense of people like kind of talking down about them being women? So here's my thought, my hot take on this, okay? I think the media has curated this beef between Nicola and Victoria because in my recon, because I'm crazy and I have no life, um, I went through like Nicola's uh, Instagram pictures like of recent and things like that. And like Victoria is commenting on every single one with her signature kisses VBXX. Oh, da -da 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 -da. Like, like, you stay away from my son. This is a horrible picture. Yeah, you look no, ugly. Like, She's like complimenting and, and like posting or commenting on every single photo pretty much. So it's like, I really think that that's something like, you know, buzz that the media just like struck a match and it took fire. I don't know if that's really real. And the one thing I'll say from watching this documentary is like, whether it's embellished or not for the cameras, like Victoria does seem to be quite self-aware of like how the media misinterpreted a lot of her and her relationship with David. I don't think oh, she's yeah. self-aware about the Rolls Royce situation, but <laughs> about being working class. Oh, we'll get, but... <laughs> yeah, I'll get to that. The ne that was the next thing I wanted to get to. I'll, uh, so, yeah, but she's self-aware she of how the media plays a part. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. what you're talking about, though, and the docuseries, <laughs> then I had to start looking it up. The docuseries covers some uh, an infamous cheating uh, debacle with David Beckham. But then there's more cheating debacles that they, but the documentary, you know, it, it, it kind of covers it, but in a very light way of, yeah, that was the toughest time of our life, but we got past it, not really acknowledging if it happened or not. Yeah. But then, yeah, there was like this thing where he was potentially cheating with one of his daughter's friends, teachers or something like that, or something. What, what, do you, what was the rumor? So the rumor is that he was um, the rumors. In the the rumors. <laughs> That's Meredith. The rumors about the was that it was a woman. I think she was like a television, a media personality, television presenter, Rebecca Luz. And so there is an article here in the Daily Mail. So take it with a grain of salt. She was a Dutch <laughs> model and presenter, and there were claims that they had uh, an affair. But no she pair. just posted, hello, winter. She, so they say she's broken her silence after David Beckham and Victoria discuss it. So she was his former PA. Um, okay. And all she did was post on Instagram. So that's totally clickbait. Uh, she posted an Instagram story. So there is but her no Instagram update. Instagram story was hello, winter? Yes. Early okay. as usual. Because I don't know. I guess if wherever she lives, it was snowing. Yes. Um, <laughs> 
So we can't take anything from that. That means nothing. So we can take nothing from that. Thank you, Daily Mail, for yeah. the clickbait. You trapped me. I love when Daily Mail does that of like, she finally <laughs> responds and then it has nothing to do with the article no. that they want to have you believe. So I, what I found interesting, and I used to be very much, and let me know what you think. I used to be of the opinion that like, if you don't, like the fact that they didn't say it didn't happen, um, like means that it happened. But now oh, I've kind God. of like changed my tune on that. Wait, you changed your tune on that? Yeah, like not in this incident, but in certain situations, I sometimes feel like some people don't comment at all because they're like, if you don't believe me, I don't owe you the explanation. Like, I think I've just met more people like this, but I'm like, I don't know. Maybe I also want to believe that it didn't happen. Well, listen, Ryan is giving me the biggest side eye right now. Just the, well, the way the documentary handles it is that they don't even say if it's true or not. They cover it, but they don't like actually like ever admit that he did it. So it's a really interesting way to cover it, which leads me to believe he definitely he, did it. But what's shocking to me, and this shows you how we all like how us men truly like we are. We suck and we're animalistic in this. And I don't want to say animalistic because that's almost an excuse is that we just make poor choices and we do think with the wrong head most of the time is that this guy, this David Beckham, you know, the one thing you can't argue is he is obsessed with Victoria Beckham. He's mm-hmm. obsessed with her. The Like from the day one, he's obsessed with her, he needs to be around her. It's codependent as hell, but he yeah. still cheated. Like he still cheated. And it, you can trace that line back to Bravo. You can trace that back line to men in your own lives. It doesn't matter. This guy was obsessed with her and he still cheated. I know. It's actually like kind of wild. Like he... I think what was so interesting was how much he spoke about how his mood would change when she wasn't around. And like, yes, it affected they, they his weren't there, it affected it everything. Affected his game and his emotional state and whatever. And you're right. And he still cheated. So, you know, that gives me hope. <laughs> wait, what? It gives you hope for what? Like literally the hope it should get, wait, the hope, yeah, the hope it should get everybody is no hope is that you will be cheated on. Yeah. It does not matter if you're the hottest person in the world. Doesn't mean if he loves you, you will still be cheated on. Yeah. Also, so I wanted just... to point out something. This is interesting. Did you know this was directed by Fisher Stevens? Fisher oh, Stevens. Oh, you know I did. So Fisher Stevens, you guys, you would know him most recently from the show Succession, mm-hmm. where he, um, I'm trying to find, what's he his, played I'm Hugo blanking on Baker. his character. Yeah, he played Hugo. And but Fisher Stevens, if you go back, his history in acting and, and even just who he did, like he had a long term relationship with Michelle Pfeiffer for a while. This guy mm-hmm. in the 90s, like really dated He's an OG. a lot of OG, but like you, anyways, he directs this and I think he did a great, fantastic job. I was in it all four episodes. I loved it. Yeah. And so, what actually, or the rumor is that David Beckham went to Leonardo DiCaprio and Leonardo DiCaprio suggested Fisher Stevens to David. But it's interesting because it's like you hear him in the background, like they must have developed a personal relationship. It yeah. feels like they're all very intimate and close, right? Like even Victoria. Um, I love I those ask things. You- yeah. Finish your sentence and I have a question for no, you. No, I just I love the part of the documentary when it was at his house and he was showing off how organized he is with his clothing. He picks out his clothing <laughs> for the entire week now. Like how into fashion, how OCD he is in terms of cleaning. He'll be like, yep. I, I clip the wicks of the ca- candles every night. I clean everything. Victoria doesn't appreciate it. Like it shows you how obsessive this guy is. And those are the little things that really just draw you in like that's the mm-hmm. stuff i'm like shit they need to make a reality show of every football game and I, it would make me so much more interested in watching every football game it's so fascinating he's like so meticulous like when he's cooking and like wiping down everything you know he's kind of like he's ocd not kind of you know yeah. it's very interesting um but i wanted to ask when they came to la galaxy and they had the welcome david party and who hosted it but not Tom Cruise and Katie Holmes at the time, and then Will and Jada Pinkett Smith. And I'm like, <laughs> was this like an early, were they trying to get him into the Scientology? Scientology. Yeah. I mean, I think, well, I do think that is like, yeah. I mean, I think that would obviously, they, I, and I remember that at the time there were articles about that. And because by the way, a lot of people don't know that Will and Jada Smith, they started a school that actually taught a lot of Scientology principles oh, no. for kids. 
So it, it, it's, you know, it is within the realm of possibility that they would try to bring those two, kind of two superstars because Scientology, in a lot of ways, their most successful years when they were able to recruit big time celebrities, whether it be John Travolta, whether it be the Tom Cruise, who is the number one famous Scientology mm -hmm. uh, Scientologist of all time. I mean, they really, by the way, they need to get their recruitment up. They need to get somebody <laughs> big soon because the Danny Masterson stuff happened. Yeah. And I don't know. So. It is, of course, I think that's part of it. But I don't know. I, I was just really blown away. So I recommend this docuseries. Even if you're not into sports, I was so into it. Moving to Taylor Swift today, what is the word? Like, we're doing this early in the morning. When does the Chief, is she going to the Chiefs game today? Is she not? We need, the local economy needs help wherever this game is playing. I mean, I haven't heard any rumors of her going to the game today. But I'm also, it's in Minnesota. So they're playing the Minnesota Vikings. But. What I'm curious about is because from the last two weeks, there had been so much chatter around it. Did maybe her team start to pull back on the publicity of it all to, you know, because there were articles even coming out being like, I'm getting tired of Taylor Swift already, or like, I'm exhausted of like the Taylor Swift news cycle. I mean, it really, I mean, I would imagine that they, yeah, obviously are very aware of everything. And it is weird because I'm so, I'm, not tired of it. I'm tired of people saying that it's a fake and a PR thing. Like at this point, these people can't do like, it's, it's whatever they do is going to be PR laden. It just, mm -hmm. whatever, like they, at this point they could say, well, we're not trying to do PR things and it would still do a PR thing because once your name gets out there, that is publicity, whether you yes. like it or not. But even this week we had, you know, articles of Tra Travis Kelsey looks glum on his birthday away from Taylor Swift. Like, you know, he's just walking in sweatpants, you know, yeah. like with not a smile on his face. They're like, looks glum. But I would, no. I would imagine it's imagine like the first month of a relationship or the first two months and it becomes public and you're having to not only deal with your own feelings, but deal with like everybody's feelings, everybody's feelings. That's gotta be so intense. Everybody's opinions too. It's kind of wild. And like everybody digging in, like so many of these Taylor Swift Twitter stand accounts or X stand accounts were like digging into Travis Kelsey and literally all they were finding, they're like, this man loves Christmas. Like all of these tweets about like how <laughs> this much son of a loves bitch loves yeah. Christmas. How <laughs> dare like, this, this guy dude loves Christmas. They found these like <laughs> quotes from Vanity Fair articles, like all this these guy tweets. loves a fat man. This guy yeah, loves a fat like, man with a white beard. They couldn't find any quote unquote dirt on him, which was so interesting that they went looking. Um, but I, you know, it was, it was funny. I did think it was PR at first. And then when the NFL started doing things like playing Taylor's, her movie commercials during the games and things like that, like, I was like, okay, is, is this PR or are there teams taking it and turning it into a PR machine? So now I'm torn. Well, that, I mean, the NFL ran with it, obviously, oh and ran with God. it even to a point where Travis Kelsey this week says, Hey, I appreciate the enthusiasm, but I wish they would like, you know chill out a little bit because yeah. it even seems probably intense to him, but it's hard because Travis Kelsey also, from what I understand, seems to be a fun loving guy he has a podcast. He talks about the movies and stuff. He likes his brother did like a twilight review in a previous <laughs> episode. So they're very aware of pop culture. Like we all are, but now when you take it to this other level, I just imagine even as a guy and he's a lot more confident than I am, I would just imagine of like, Oh shit, am I saying the wrong thing? Am I screwing this up? And, and especially if you're out there, commenting on everything about pop culture or things like that anyways you're you're destined to put your foot in your mouth i was in new york last week when they were there and like i was at via Corota the day before taylor was there and i was at like i mean you i i was feeling the energy i was like looking around for taylor all the time yeah she was always popping in and out with like uh sophie turner and her her <laughs> taylor <laughs> army friends and i mean it's really exciting i just don't know how you would be able to keep any relationship going in that intense bubble well, you know, what's also so interesting is like, obviously we had Taylor there with Blake Lively, Ryan Reynolds. She adopted another divorcee, Hugh Jackman, but like, so. I know the Hugh Jackman. Of, hey, thanks Taylor. Oh yeah. yeah I'm Wolverine. <laughs> like he walked in with Wolverine and Deadpool at the football game. It's so funny. But what happened that was also interesting that I'm like, everybody is taking their piece of the pie here of the Taylor machine. Like. Ryan Reynolds owns a marketing and ad agency yeah, called Maximum Mint. Effort. Yeah. And they did the State Farm. So Jake from State Farm sat with Travis and Jason Kelsey's mom at the Eagles game in Philadelphia before the Kansas City game in New York. 
that was all curated and a stunt produced by, Ryan by Maximum Effort, which is Ryan Reynolds' company. So I'm like, every, like Taylor is not going alone here. She's like, everybody's getting a little piece of the pie. No, if I was Taylor, I would, I mean, like, obviously, I mean, I would be pissed off if I found out Ryan Reynolds. I mean, obviously she had to have been somewhat a part of it or, or knew of it to a degree, because if not, I feel like, Ryan, that's like abusing, like friend, that's abusing a friendship in a sense and using information to line your pockets, which yeah. in a sense is obviously PR or is Jake, uh, is Jake from State Farm da- uh, dating Jason Kelsey? Is that, I mean, is it a natural <laughs> thing that has nothing to do with PR? Like, it, oh my, I don't know how Jason's wait. wife would feel about that, but. <laughs> oh, see, I'm not that into sports. I didn't even know he had a wife. Did you, had a wife. did you, <laughs> did oh, you see that? He met her on Tinder. <laughs> did he really? Yeah. Oh my God. Ladies, never give up. Never, never give, give up. up. You can meet they might cheat your football player. They never know. Yeah. By the way, they'll still love I you, love baby. that we are really. We've gotten to a place in society where we. It's like women. I feel like almost sadly, fifty percent accept that your man's going to cheat. You know, mm-hmm. like like almost like well, it happens. It's going to happen. It's just that's what it happens. Like I know. They, they almost accept it. It's so sad. It's crazy. It's um, so sad. The bar is. Did you hell. see Donna Kelsey? The mom was on one of the morning shows and they asked what it was like to hang out with Taylor Swift. And she just said, it was okay. Yeah. It was okay. And oh I was my like, God. that's amazing. And I then people that. were like, she hates her. Da, 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 da. I'm like, okay, calm down. Like she's a mom. She was what just is being she funny, say? right? Yes. Yeah. Um, uh. Okay. Sorry. That was our sports section uh, <laughs> of so bad. It's good. I, I can hear people either being Over annoyed or loving it. <laughs> um, okay. So this week, the Writers Guild strike ended uh, about a week and a half ago. The Screen Actors Guild strike hopefully will end this week. Um, but a lot of shows have returned to air in terms of talk shows and things like that. This Saturday, we have the premiere, the the you know season 49 premiere of Saturday Night Live, hosted by Pete Davidson mm-hmm. and musical guest Ice Spice. And then the next week, Bad Bunny uh, will be both the musical guest and the host. Are you excited for SNL to come back? And do you think Pete Davidson is a good uh comeback host i am so excited like i am like a diehard snl fan like i watch every weekend yeah. since i was a child i know that it hasn't yeah, been the best too. lately but like i am a diehard snl fan so i'm so excited i love pete davidson as well i think it will be interesting to hear him talk i know he went back to rehab in the interim of this i'm pretty sure he was supposed to be the guest when they he, canceled the season finale, the he was supposed to be the season finale of season 48, but then the writer's guild strike happened and they had yeah. to cancel everything. But I'm actually more interested in bad bunny because bad bunny is like loose. Like he's like down to, you know, be, you know, down wild and free, but he, there's a pretty significant language barrier. So I'm going to be curious how that works. Okay. That's what I was it's because Bad Bunny, admittedly, this isn't something that, you know, yeah. he, we, you know, we're, he is not great with the English language yes. yet. And by the way, that's, that's, uh, I mean, that, that's not, he's not American. So of course he would have trouble with it. And I love that he is so committed to like, how do they do this? Is this going to be one of the first times where there will be subtitles at SNL? And I'm not joking. I'm not, there's no joke here. I'm curious. I mean, is he going to just play like, you know, characters with one line. How does how does this all work? I'm really curious. I don't know, but I am thinking that Kendall's going to be helping him rehearse all week long, and I oh, think she'll or, well, Kim make and, an and Kim. Kim's like, I I host an SNL. I can help you know. I know how to do all of this. I'm a yeah. comedian. Yeah. Uh, um, do you think Kendall will be in the audience? I don't know. Well, this is where I go back and forth because if it was like. I think Chris will be pushing for Kendall to make a cameo because the Kardashians are out on Hulu now, but Kendall is like the most private of all of them. So I'm not sure though. They also have recently gone public with that Gucci ad. So I think she'll make a little. That's PR. Lex, that's PR. That Gucci ad pisses me off. How are you going to go out there and say how private you are as a couple? And then here's a big Gucci. Like I thought you were private as a couple. And I kind of started to respect that in a sense, even if I didn't think it was necessarily a hundred percent real relationship, but then you monitor monetize it in such a big way with a Gucci ad. I'm sorry, that came off tacky to me. I mean, yeah. it was like, ooh, really? And then there was the whole joke because after that ad came out a couple days later, Kim posted in like a Gucci branded bikini, like crystal bikini. Yeah, and everyone I... is like, oh, we just had the whole thing with Kim and Courtney 
around Italy, uh, Dolce and Gabbana in Italy. And then she's doing this and everyone's like, maybe Courtney was right. So it's so <laughs> funny. <laughs> These, to, this tangled web the Kardashians the tangled weave. Tangled web they're weaving. Um, uh, Pete Davidson, I will be interested to see. I, but I will say, you know, it's like I was thinking about pop culture as I do every day, but it's interesting. I go by my gut a lot and like feelings and like yeah. I read a lot and all that stuff. Am I mistaken or is there, from Pete Davidson for me, I not, I'm trying to use the correct words. He does not seem as white hot in terms of celebrity and fame as he did six months ago, if that makes sense. Like kind of me is like, oh, okay. Yeah, I guess he's still around. Like I watched some of the episodes of his show on Peacock. Um, yeah, Bupkis. Bupkis. I didn't really enjoy it. Um, I knew he went to rehab, which I thought was good. Uh, he had broken up with his girlfriend and then supposedly now is dating Madeline Klein from Outer Banks. But to me, I was like, okay, in terms of like, you know, that white hot heat of when he was dating Kim, it seems like on the downslope, which he probably wants because that's way too intense to date somebody like a Kardashian. But I'm curious of what his next step is. Like, I'm curious how good his stand up is. I'm curious. And, and SNL, like, you know, the cast members, you know, admittedly said, you know, they didn't get along with him. Pete didn't have the same rules as all they like. They yeah. he didn't have to show up to all night writing meetings. He got to show up on Friday or Saturdays, do his blocking and go on. He had a different kind of deal than all those other cast members did. And even Pete said, you know, he was kind of laughed at. He was kind of like he wasn't a part of the gang, you know, except for Colin Jost, um, you know, on the the yeah. the we weekend update, update desk. Yeah, so I'm I'm curious how he'll be used, how they'll use him, and like you know, I don't know. It's interesting. Do you, do you, does that make sense? Yeah. So I mean, I think there's a couple of things in this. Like he definitely had this element of favoritism from Lord Michaels. To your point, where like he yes. didn't have to show up to all the things that ever like the week is grueling on SNL. Like I um again yeah. love the show, and I went to they had an exhibit at the Museum of Communication in Chicago that I went to, and it takes you through how the whole week works and it's grueling. Like they're all living there basically Monday through Saturday. Yeah. And so um, he didn't have to really do all of that. And he could like go to LA and be with Kim and then fly in for the weekend and whatever. Um, and so I am curious now that he's kind of like the, the anchor of the entire, of every sort of skit and e episode, um, how that will go. Because he was always kind of that like side guy that was just like, ha ha ha, like, you know, putting in those one liners yeah. or facial expressions or talking about very personal things on weekend update. Yeah. And he I don't would do a stand up pretty much on yeah. weekend update. Yeah. So how that will translate into the actual skits, I'm, I'm interested to see, but if he's coming out of rehab and he's like, you know, trying something new, maybe he'll lean in more. I don't know. We're going to find out. He does a lot of accent work. He's going to do a lot of <laughs> accent work. It's going to, what if he be like Daniel Day Lewis all of a sudden? He's like, I've never seen comedic acting like this in my life. <laughs> do um, we think but, the Madeline Klein thing is real? That pissed me off. Well, you don't come okay, out of so rehab the and start Klein, dating somebody. <laughs> well, listen, I feel like I'm the one that kind of uh, secreted this because I, I did a post a while back that I needed Pete to date a new famous person. And it looks oh. like, my wi but we still, if this was true, I feel like we would have gotten one picture. We would have yeah. gotten one picture by now because supposedly they went to Vegas together. And I feel like, I don't know. I just feel like we would have gotten a photo if this truly was a real rumor. And then I was wondering if it could be like, um, like that service cameo that I'm on where like you could rent, like rent <laughs> rumors, like Madeline Klein's like, you can tell your friends I'm dating you for $70 yeah. a week. Like, wouldn't that be kind of a cool thing of like, I'll agree that I'm dating you. I, I don't want to ever see you, but you can tell your friends but, I'm yes. dating you. If anybody asks, we're dating. No problem. This is my Venmo. <laughs> yeah, I would love that. Um, I went to a Saturday Night Live. The I went I went once and got to see it because I knew a really? writer. And I also, yo, yeah, oh man, my, I used to work with uh, Melissa Villasenor, who used to be on the show for, yeah. she, who's awesome. But also she always mentioned what a pressure cooker environment it is. It is not for the faint of heart. Like you, it is such a killer be killed kind of, um, you know, society that they have built in like the late nights, you really are up all night. But I was there for the Tom Hanks, Lady Gaga one, <gasps> David S. Pumpkins. Um, no. and it was right. It was, oh yeah. It was the week before the election. Dude, this writing crew, they looked exhausted because and it was like they had uh, I saw Alec Baldwin in the Trump outfit, like walking around backstage because I walked from backstage. Oh, my God. I was like 
I got to go to the after party and like, I mean, this it was is the iconic. Whole, oh yeah. I got to go see, I got to go up and see their offices where they write. And it was funny. Like these guys, you could just tell they were on their last legs because during that Trump Hillary, that last week of the election, so much stuff was happening that they had to throw out a bunch of stuff at the last minute and stay up even longer and write new sketches. But it was just, you just saw how beat everybody was. Like it yeah. was, it was like, you don't think about that. It's like exciting to us, but it is their job. They were just beat. Like you could just tell like the one guy, the one writer that we were there with, he didn't even want to go to the after party. Cause he was like, I've been here for 72 hours. Yeah. Like I don't, I, like, I just don't. <laughs> I'm like, this is the best night of my life. Take a picture of me on the stage. Like I was so, and it, 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 I mean, it's iconic and historical, but it's just sometimes you realize it's a job to them and yeah. they're just trying to get through the week. And it just seems so intense. It's so intense. And I don't envy them at all in the sense that it's grueling to your point, but man, that's like magical that you got to see. all. Oh, that. it really was. I mean, I, I'm just like you. I've been, I watched every episode. My dad got me watching as a kid. And mm -hmm. like I say, I hate it nowadays. Like I really find only a couple of things funny each week and I'll fast forward through a lot, unfortunately, but listen, that's also comedy is that I hope kids like it. I hope at least kids yeah. are loving it because I just sometimes am so judgmental in my older age where I'm like, this isn't even funny. And the internet <laughs> screws it up because you've seen every joke on Twitter or, I you know, know, you've seen every joke by the time they get to the joke, you've already seen it. The internet, like, especially as of late, I feel like it's like, you know, when there's like the people like take the joke, they go too far and they kill the joke. I feel like yeah. the internet has been doing that with ever like we've seen this with the Taylor and Travis like we will take any teeny or large piece of information and just like really beat it down into the ground oh, yeah. until like oh, yeah. everybody and so fast so fast Lex, that's what this whole show is about is beating <laughs> something into the ground um I know okay moving on <laughs> yeah by the way I love it uh, so uh moving on I wanted to talk about uh the Kardashians a little bit because we had just okay. mentioned them but the new season on Hulu and guys I got to tell you, there are only two episodes in. I am loving this show. And I know a lot. Of, I get a lot of hate from you guys for talking about the Kardashians. Or, but like I always say, I, I feel like I say this so I'm blue in the face. You've got to study this. And it works on it's ridiculous. It's weirdly funny in a way that it's they're, they don't even mean it to be. Yeah. They are all so extreme in their wealth now. Like it is just a mess of a show that I love watching this week. I mean, it went from everywhere from like. Kim, like, you know, doing her innocence project and like helping people break free to like Tristan realizing that Chloe wasn't going to take him back, you know, even though he's still living under the roof. Yeah. I mean, it just, it hits everything. Like it is. And it's so weird. Cause you'll have like kind of a cheesier subplot and then you'll go to Kim trying to free uh, a potentially innocent prisoner. And you're like, Oh, that's, that's a wild U-turn that you just did in this episode. So I it? haven't started this season yet. I'm oh, behind, but I will catch God. up. I know I'm going to have to binge a few episodes, but is Tristan like on the show this season? Okay. So he has been, and this, this episode, like he's living there because his mom passed away and he yeah. got primary custody of his brother. I think Amari, who mm -hmm. is, you know, disabled and living with Chloe's, his house is supposed to be done, but it isn't. So he's been staying there for a couple months and she, uh, you know, they're so good with Amari, the brother, and, and Chris. Obvi Chris, anybody that cheats on one of Chris's daughters is a hero in Chris's eyes for some <laughs> reason. She's like, oh, my God, you're amazing, Tristan. The way you fooled Chloe time and time again. You know, and Scott's always like, let me on we the show. We could use more people like you. On the show. Please let me on the show. I love you David You such Beckham. a good... Scott impression. Scott, yeah. Oh, my God. It, it's sad because he's not even on the show. Any he's barely I on know. the show. Next week, he's going to be on the show where he talks about the crash that has made him gain weight. I'm gaining weight. I'm I'm wearing sweatpants all the time, Pojo. <laughs> you know? Okay, so anyways, this was a good episode in the sense that Tristan comes in and you can tell, like, he has this scene with Chloe where he's like, like, you're my forever person. You're my person. And she's like, well, I'm sorry that that you have to, you know, I mean, if I am your person, then this is the pain you have to go through, uh, you know, unfortunately, because of what you did. Now, who knows if this is reality or you yeah. know, who knows if she's like, you better film a scene where I look awesome standing up to you. Yeah. But it is interesting because if you buy it as a real, like real, then it's like interesting because you see Tristan realize that he's going to potentially not be able to win Chloe back to cheat on her again. Because yeah. if he wins her back, 
he's never going to not cheat on her. That's just, there's, there's just no, I'm sorry. I don't care if, I don't care if he truly means it in his heart that he doesn't want to cheat. He will cheat on her again, period. I agree with you 1000, like percent, like there's just no world where Tristan is not cheating. He's cheated on everybody and he's cheated yes. on Chloe multiple times. Like they got together kind of like the timeline is blurred. So it's like, sir, she can be your forever person, the love of your life. You can be as obsessed with her as David is with Posh, but like, you're still going to cheat, honey. So if she's not yeah. down for that, you've got to cut your losses, babe. Yeah. I mean, it, it, so it, it's interesting, but it is interesting to think of the, all these people have like forcing themselves to live in this bubble. Like oh. Chloe can't out there, go out there and get on Tinder, like, you know, one of the Kelsey guys <laughs> and meet somebody like, could and you, you know imagine Chris you're on Tinder like, and Chloe pops up? You know, Chris is just like, let Travis stay at the house. You know, he's like the father of your children. Da, 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 da. Like she's pushing that. And then she's like shoving the cameras in there. Like Chris is going I, for, she wants a clip. She wants a but, viral I, sound but, bite. I mean, the, the, I will never understand the way Chris celebrates these men that cheat on her daughters. And that's mm -hmm. why I think it's like, must just be really accepted is that men do this. And Corey Gamble and her relationship, Chris, they celebrate, they go on date night at Giorgio Baldi. And yeah. it's so funny. Chris says, you know, she goes to sleep around 7 p.m. Like Corey really is adjusted to her lifestyle. And Corey, to me, seems like a 65 year old man in a 40 year old man's body. And he just knows not to screw up that bag. He, like He's just like, whatever you want, Chris. I love that booty. Like, it's so hard. Do you ever sit there and think about <laughs> this? Is, do you ever think about <laughs> Corey and Chris getting physical? Do you ever think about that? Like, what uh, that? I is, she, is she have. a lion? OK, I good. definitely I'm, I'm, have. Yeah. I feel like it is very much he works around her and her needs. <laughs> Wait, do you like, mean like do you mean like if your back's hurting, I'm going to work around yes. your back? Like I'll, yeah, I'll put I, you like, on your side over gonna here. We're going to prop the pillows this way <laughs> and make it work. And maybe they have those special like angular pillows or like the extra long <laughs> ones. You know, she's got her hip problems. So I 1000% think he caters to her and her needs in the bedroom. But like. Here's my question. If Corey ever cheated on Chris, I think that I, my head would pop off. Like we're talking well, about men I cheating. I think it would turn Chris on. It would turn, she'd be like, oh my God, you really are a part of this family. Like, oh, <laughs> now I know you're my forever it's person. You cheated on me. <laughs> yeah, like the rite of passage that every Kardashian man goes to. By the way, it's not WAGs. There needs to be a Kardashian, like a CAG. CAG. Like, a, yeah. like a, a CAGs for Kardashian men involved with these women. I'll have to think on that. I'm going to find an acronym. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So, uh, you know, Kardashian, that's our little Kardashian section, you guys. Now let's head over to Bravo. Southern Charm is on its third episode. By the way, it is getting lower and lower ratings each week, which like mystifies me because I think it's a decent season because these men of Charleston are just ding dongs to the utmost degree. And it is funny because it's like they eat their young. Like even now, Chef, who's like a known philanderer, is now having to deal with Austin potentially having hooked up with his ex Taylor. Yeah. And Austin is the worst. I, I almost think this is like acting or fake because he's like, so projecting that he actually did hook up with Taylor. What's your take on this, this whole situation? I, first of all, I was like, Taylor girl has balls because she's securing her place in like the future of Southern charm here. So I am very interested in that scenario. Um, I right off the bat thought they hooked up when they said there were they she slept over. I was like, okay, interesting, you know. And everybody is always like, I always say, even in like my personal relationships with friends and whatever, they're like, we just kissed. I'm like, no, you didn't. Mm. Okay, wait, no, wait, wait. The only thing, the only pushback I will say. I okay. have in the past, I have had girls stay over that have no, there's been like, not, I mean, like not even in the same room. Like I will say that, but listen, I'm not Austin. I'm only six foot, you know, like I'm not <laughs> six, five or whatever he is, but like, I, but I will say, so were, these people that ex, you, it, were these people that you like, had a vibe with and there was like a tension no, there? No, they were and friends. Were, they were friends. Yeah, yes. These two have yeah. had a vibe. Like Madison calls it out a few times. They did a flashback in like the episode and like, there's a vibe there. So yeah. I just think that more, because the thing is, I don't think if Austin made a move, Taylor would decline because Olivia aside with everything that Shep did to her, she feels entitled to be able to do whatever she wants. Austin does seem like that kind of guy that just, 
Personal Agreed. relationships be damned. He's going to get what he wants to get. And it's probably not even as thought out of that. It's probably I'm drunk in that moment. I I, I find her hot. I want to hook up with her. Mm -hmm. Girls are hot. I want to make out and hook up with as many girls as I, you know, like it's probably not as even thought out. And that's why it's interesting that he's how now having to deal with whatever consequences these are, which aren't much because Shep's going to just be like, well, just make sure it doesn't happen again or exactly. some kind of stupid bullshit. And this Whitney, Whitney's like 65 years old <laughs> and like everybody kisses his ass because he's a producer on this show and he'll sit there and like feed him caviar and chicken. And they all like, they all like, you can tell they like have the utmost respect for Whitney because Whitney's mm -hmm. in charge. So they'll always be like, can I come over Whitney? Can I come over to your place and drink champagne? What, is your mom up? Can I like, it is so funny how they all like kowtow around Whitney and Whitney it's will crazy. say the most obnoxious things, like even about the women. And they're like, that's so funny, Whitney. Oh man. Smell my fingers. They're so I love that. up his own, like up his ass. It's insane. Like Austin at that dinner where we're uh, him and Whitney were having dinner during Taylor's event. I'm like, you are so up Whitney's ass. It's crazy. Yeah. It's like SNL people hanging out with Lauren Michaels, I imagine. Yeah. They're just like, yes. Lauren, hey. Like, he they just, and then Craig was like, can I come over? And then Shep's like, can I come over? And then everybody goes over. And it's just, it, I, it's very interesting if you watch it through that prism because he does produce the show. And I think uh, it's interesting, but I, I, what love do you Southern think? Charm what do you think, though, but what happened between Austin and Taylor? They hooked up, period. Yeah. They hooked up. The only thing I will find is funny is that Taylor, you know, is so in love with God and Jesus. And like, I swear, she says, I swear to God. And if you are the, this, God must be so livid. I was like, you use my name. Like, <laughs> I don't care if you hooked up with Austin, but you used my name. You say you love yeah, me and you lie. Like that, that part I would feel if I was Taylor, I'd be like, oh shit, what did I do? And, and then camera. if you open if you open your mind up to people that love God are lying, then you can't trust anybody that you, that they swear to God of all people. God is we're losing, off then. We're losing a lot of faith in people. For this episode. Well, by the way, God, by the way, it is projected that God will be at the Southern charm reunion. They're going to bring him on as a special. He's like, I cannot uh, Andy's wait like, for Andy. We've got, yeah, God, he's like, God's coming a part on, of every one of our live. Drop your questions. <laughs> God, God. God, we're going to play a game of fashion or trashing you in the sandals in the robe. Well, I would, I would say fashion. It actually comes back a lot. Um, okay. So, I mean, it's just funny. All these, it, it just goes back to cheaters It all, they all cheat on each other. You can't trust any of them. It's a highly watchable show, but I will say it's also funny in talking about how society treats women. I've read more mean comments about Taylor than I have Austin. Of course. I mean, that is par for the course. And you knew that was coming. Like everybody is going to show Austin grace because he's a white six foot five male. And this is what he does. Like we all know we're used to it. And it's Taylor that's going to, you know, bear the scarlet letter. I'm going to be very dramatic. And Taylor's here. not as, and Taylor doesn't, is not as funny as the men. Like these exactly. men know their way around a talking head. Uh, like they're mm -hmm. funny, they're affable. And women, it's the same thing a little bit with Katie Maloney and Schwartz back in the day. Mm -hmm. Katie, like Schwartz gave better talking head. Like Schwartz was better at that. We all cheer. Oh, he's cute and funny and lovable and a lost puppy dog. And Katie is not as fun. Like that was exactly. always the rap. And so she didn't get the best, like the better of the two edits and people didn't think of her as highly. Like it's shitty, but it's true. Oh, sorry. Can I swear? Sorry. No, you can, yeah, you can fully. <laughs> How fucking dare you? My God. <laughs> the, there's kids listening to this everywhere. It's, but I didn't um, realize the ratings were going down because I feel like, I feel like this season they're like making a comeback on Southern Charm. I like, think I'm they enjoying are in terms it. of just, but, but I'm, I'm so in that Bravo bubble online yep. and stuff. So like everybody that I know watches it, but it's like anybody else, like I could mention it to my dad. He would not know what I was talking about. I could mention to my sister, not know. My sister actually watched Real Housewives of Salt Lake City for the first time. And I'm going to, I keep trying to get her to come on because she was talking to me last night. She goes, Oh my God, Ryan, the first couple of episodes, it was just scary because she was just like, like the, their looks, you know, like even like the the yeah. amount of filler and stuff is like she she just wasn't used to that extreme of looks. And she was like, this is wild. Like, you know, it's like and then she goes by the third episode, I got used to it, you know, like but the first episode, it was I shocking. Know. But she said at first I was really highly kind of annoyed by watching it. But by the third episode, I was like, oh, yeah. And I was like, that's it, Kara. That's so bad. It's good. That's it. It's like a virus that sneaks up on you that it you does. shouldn't like this. And then you start you're like liking sucked it. sucked in. I was just yeah. I was watching this week's episode. I didn't finish it, but like 
I was desperate. Like, I again, I think this season, like the newbies and the OGs of Salt Lake, like coming together has been very entertaining. Whitney oh, I, and I, I, I Justin concern me. I just have to like flag that. I think You've they- You've got they're... to go back to work, Justin, <laughs> but I don't want it to go back to the old way of women having to do the pickups for the kids. <laughs> Yeah. I feel like she's like trying to be center Apple, you know, or snowflake or whatever they hold. Like, and she's just not going to be a Lisa Barlow. Well, or she, makes, Marks. she makes moves. It's just, we got to strengthen that voice. Yeah. If, we, if, if she was able to be on her voice, her register, I think it would be so much better because she does make, she makes maybe some sloppy but decent housewives moves if you think of it as a game. It's just that I think the way it's it's all in how you present yourself. It's all in how like the talking head and how you and when you have this little kind of light voice, it hurts. Even like I was talking about with David Beckham, like you got this manly guy and then he's like, hey, I like Victoria. What's going on? You guys. It, it's you're like, oh, my God, I expected a much deeper voice coming out of this person. I don't know. I know. And it's um, so soft spoken. David did you sticky watch? Stuff. Uh, the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills trailer. Yes. Oh my god. Are you god. gonna watch this season? Of course. That so yeah, I of like I watch New York and Beverly Hills. Those are the two that I like keep up with consistently every time. But I am very much a yeah. below deck uh summer house VPR. Are you, wait, so you don't you don't do you've not messed with Real Housewives of Potomac yet? I've watched it. I don't keep up with oh. like Potomac, Atlanta, OC. I never watched oh Dallas. Oh my God. I know. I'm so excited for Potomac to return. That, that trailer looked good too. Those ladies. That trailer did just, look good. <laughs> the way they interact with each other is just on another level. They all like, it's like, if you think of like their dialogue as Shakespeare, they're all like little Shakespeare's mm -hmm. like the way they shade each other. And they say it with just such panache and style. They'll go there. That they'll I just, go there. I, they'll go there. I just think they're, the way they interact is just so different than other franchises they're all just each one of them is very strong even if you don't like them as a character the way they talk with each other is just still amazing but beverly hills this trailer is i thought great but it, it does seem to revolve around this kyle mauricio split and the introduction we do now see filming with i'm morgan wade mm -hmm. <laughs> she has like this weird voice morgan wade. it's like okay i have two things number one like kyle we all talked about like Courtney changing her style and identity for Travis. Like the way Kyle has evolved her style <laughs> in her quote unquote friendship with Morgan Wade is wild. It is a wild journey from those like patterned sky tops that were all flowy, whatever, to yeah. trucker hats. Kyle, Kyle by Shahida boots. is gone. Yes. No like, caftans anymore. It's wild, that journey that she's on. And then the other question, did you see, was it a tweet or an Instagram post of Maurizio with his parents? And there was like one of the real housewives. Yes. People are like, who's this woman? Is she from the Real Housewives of OC? No, she's not from the Real Housewives. No, she is. In fact, I have, uh, I have her name right here. Sorry. It Okay. Oh gosh. I was like, who I don't have I the name, to... but I have the photo right here yeah, of him so... with Mauricio's parents. She was at the Dancing with the Stars yes. and she was at dinner with them uh afterwards. So who knows what is, is going on? Is he dating there. her? Is this like well, what we're meant rumor. to believe? I, I don't know. I mean, like the parents are there. She's a beautiful woman. She's not um you know what? I'll I'll find out more information yeah, and put it at the top you. of the show, you guys. But um Wait, I'm oh, I'm getting a text. Uh, so wait, <laughs> breaking did news. You know Kyle? Oh, did you? Oh wait, somebody just texted me. Did you know Kyle reposted you? Yeah, that's what <gasps> I was gonna say. So I I posted this meme on Friday of Kyle and Morgan as uh, Wayne and Garth from Wayne's yes. World of like Wayne's World party party on Morgan party on Kyle, um, because they look like Wayne and Garth, right? And no, Ryan, the that, accuracy of that was perfect. Like there were no notes hit it out of the park, home run. Like that was amazing. Well, it was howling. It, you know, it made me laugh uh, even. Like <laughs> I was like cracking up. But then uh, on I, yesterday, I got a bunch of DMs like when I was with my sister and everybody, Kyle reposted it, but she didn't tag me. How dare you, Kyle? Oh, How my dare God. you, Kyle Richards? She said, I love the internet, LOL. And she didn't tag me, which 
Listen, that is, but I, I have my watermark hidden in the middle. Uh-huh. Like, so you can see my little watermark, but not, you know, just so nobody can steal it as their own. But this Kyle, you don't give credit, Kyle. That makes, I'm going to have to go extra hard on her and Morgan now, her special friend. Also, somebody said this. Do you think maybe it's not a relationship and maybe Kyle um, had to, um, maybe Kyle had a secret baby that got adopted and this is her daughter, like Morgan Waits, her daughter that came back and they're like actually mother and daughter. Um, oh my God. I mean, listen, I go back to the outfits. It could be mommy and me style, right? Like it yeah, very much could saying. be. Like, so you could be onto something Morgan, here. <laughs> but Morgan's voice is so funny that he's like, I'm getting a tattoo of Kyle's first name. It's like a really, and, and by the way, I'm not talking about her music. I hear her music is great. I'm talking about this scenario and it does seem to be a bit of a toxic relationship. Like, it, like, I'm sorry, all these photos in the Daily Mail, it seems like they're all over each other. They're playing a lot of ass grab and like a lot of close. I mean, how are you with your girlfriends? Is it this, if I took photos of you out with your girlfriends, would I say, oh, secret relationship? No, there's no world. Like, this is the thing. I, you know, everybody share your truth in your own time, but the way that sure. you're baiting us, reality television, that's yeah, different. like you're baiting us with like these pictures, you're producing a movie, you're in the music video, essentially alluding to like all of the rumors that people have around you. Like, I just, I have mixed feelings about that in the sense of you are now like, how, how is this relationship going to actually survive when you're essentially leveraging it for your professional advancement, both of you, you know, like your relationship is built on like, uh, what's the phrase I'm looking for? Like making people question things and wonder and like, yeah. Yeah. Like, but like, how are you going to complain about something that you are taking a part in having that mystery brought in? Participating. Well, as we go to from the beginning, is this a PR thing? Is this, is this Kyle playing with the media? Which I think is just so ridiculous. Like, just think about the reality of that. You're saying that you'd be willing to hurt your kids and your family just for PR. And by the way, some of you guys might say, well, yeah, Kyle would do that. But I don't know. There's part of me, and maybe it's me believing. I don't even think, I was about to say I believe in the good of people, but I don't even know if that's true. I just think that's like, what a long way to go. Even in that trailer, we see the kids crying. Like they sat them down to talk yes. about their family splitting up. And that to me was brutal. Like, ooh, you brought the kids on? Like that was the only like, I was like, oh, I, I don't know if I, that part gave me a little, like that made me sad. Like, don't make the that kids made me sad too. have their reactions on camera. Kyle's narrative was always, I'm a mother first, I'm a mother first. So like, it's interesting to see all of this play out and happen. Um, And if this is for PR, I would be jaw on the floor. Like, I just, I, that would be really, that's, I mean, when God, when God comes on the Southern Charm reunion, we need to ask him Mm -hmm. what relationships are PR because only God knows. Like, (laughs) God never know the truth about this stuff. And that's what kills me. Okay. Wait, I got information. This lady's name that Mo was with is an agency realtor and her name is Leslie Ray Bega. And Ooh. she used to, she was an actress at one point and she used to be on 902, 90210 and played a girlfriend of Brandon's back in the day. Okay. There you go. So Leslie Ray so Bega the with the agency. Yeah. Um, I don't know, but, but, but by the way, I, also another talk about cheating and men, it gets brought up in the trailer is that there's yes. been a lot of rumors about Mauricio cheating and, it's another one of those things that I'm like this, the tale of oldest tale as old as time. Um, if, if what does Kyle has say cheated for a once bunch it's not that. about you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it, it's wild, but also I hope Kyle, I mean, obviously you don't want to push people to like come out or, you know, mm-hmm. until they're ready. But if you're using it in reality television and we're all speculating at a certain point, you want, it's good for representation because you want people to feel comfortable to be themselves and to be like, I have, zero feeling if Kyle is in a gay relationship or not. I have, there's zero, like, I mean, I would, I would almost be like, Oh hell. Like, I don't know. I'm, I'm so desensitized in certain ways that I'm just like, yeah, love who you want to love. If that makes yeah. you feel good. Like, but the, the whole hiding, are they, aren't they? I think that can be potentially dangerous. And I are agree. you really hiding it from the kids? If you're on every paper or every like daily mail and TMZ. I agree. The fact that like, she may or may not be a lesbian or in this relationship is not news to me in the sense that like, that's not a shocking reveal, like love who you love and live your life, live your truth. What is news to me is like, are they using it to get eyeballs on them and build sort of their like public brand and persona? That's where you start to piss me off and lose me. Like, you know what I mean? 
So, yeah, totally. and then to your uh, point, pulling I mean, in, the kids are crying in the trailer. Like, it's crazy. Like, it. I, I don't know. It's giving Chris Jenner I mean, uh, in terms of how only, far only she's time in to my go. life. Only time in my life that I would love Lisa Rinna's take on this. This is the only mm. time I'm like, oh, I would have loved Lisa Rinna's take on Kyle's relationship. Like, wait, just, you know, own it, Kyle. Own it. Own it. You love women. Own it. Do we think Lisa Rinna is going to be able to bite her tongue during this season? Or do you think we're going to get some interesting or opinionated Dude, Instagram no. stories? Lisa Rinna will probably be on Bethany Frankel's podcast. <laughs> Mark my, my, my words. She'll be on that <laughs> podcast the week this premieres. Mark my word. I am putting it on a so Heard bad it's good first. prediction. She will be there that uh, she will be there. I'm, I'm almost and I she will not keep her mouth shut. I mean, this is that to me is PR is that you ride that yes. wave. That's why we saw Sandoval riding the wave of that podcast directly on the day of Dancing with the Stars with Ariana is that mm-hmm. you use that thing to put your name in that news cycle and kind of ride whatever you wave you can. All those Vanderpumpers are so good at that, which, by the way, did you listen so to Sandoval's podcast? I did not. But I read right. somebody did like a, I listened to it so you didn't have to um yeah and so i read like co- sort of like the cliff notes <laughs> i did a two i, I did a, a two How hour pod it? on the pay i did a two hour pod on the patreon it, it's like fine it's like but it's interesting it's not like you know it's like it's not a it's literally the last one jerry o'connell came in and asked him questions about the like it's not ta- it's like if this show is just tom talking about what he did and and having people ask him questions. I think that's an interesting, (laughs) an interesting podcast. Like it's not necessarily, it's so weird. It's like so weird. It's kind of sad. You can just tell he wants to be a good, he wants to be known as a good guy so badly. And it's like this, but it's a weird format. I mean, it's only two episodes in and he's just not the best communicator. So Jerry O'Connell in the second episode took over and just started asking questions, which I thought was great. Did you watch Ariana on Dancing with the Stars? Of Have you course. dug her so far? Yeah, she's really good. Her and Charity Lawson, I didn't watch that season. Like I haven't really been into The Bachelorette, but I started The Golden Bachelor and I'll keep up with it. I didn't watch this week, but Oh Charity, my God, that makes me cry every week. Bald my eyes out like he I, I wasn't even like five minutes the first episode he picked up the hearing aid i was bawling like it was goes, my friend this was our me. forever this was yeah. forever home my my beautiful wife no. um uh but yeah it was Ariana's just oh my amazing God. on dancing with the stars so is charity did you see harry jousey and his partner holding hands so I was on your Instagram and you mentioned that you said you did not think Harry Jowsey, who was from uh, what, uh, Too Hot, Too to, Hot handle. to Handle, and then, Netflix. now he's like just, he's in that whole like, re- I don't know why he's really successful He's on like whatever, the but- Nick Vial trajectory of just like immersing uh, yeah. himself well, in. So Harry has a podcast already. Yes. Probably. He does, I think. Well, yeah. Anyway, so so he was holding hands with his dance partner, which is very Dancing with the Stars. Somebody has to hook up with their partner every season, and Harry is the one to do it this season. So I guess, I mean, do you have any opinion on this at all? I mean, this is the thing that's, like, kind of weird with Harry Jousey, and maybe it's, like, Austin Kroll coded is, like, I don't think he was ever a bad person, but he was, like, a quote-unquote villain-esque on too hot to handle with Francesca. And I know they had a lot of battles back and forth after the show, but he's yeah, Francesca uh, Fargo, who now is with, um, I believe, who uh, is with, uh, I think that she's like in a queer relationship, I believe. Right. Yes. That's a, I was like, yeah, I believe so. Yes. Yeah. But Harry is like somebody that I feel is kind of like won me over. Like I, I don't think he's the best dancer. He's going to win dancing with the stars, but I'm excited for him to be there. And like, I wish him well, you know, <laughs> I wish him well. So I don't basically, care you're saying you'd hook will. up with. You're saying you would hook up with Harry Jowsey. That's oh, basically no. that whole. The, oh, what, okay. Well, regardless, see that's I, where you I, lose I, me because, like, he's. I, I just feel like he's probably hooked up with so many people, and I'm like, mm. he has. But I feel like that does not. Girls are blind to those things. That I will say that is the one thing with girls. Like, girls will know these people cheated, and they'll still hook up with them, thinking that they'll be the ones to make them yeah. different, and it's just never no. the case. Um, okay. Do you have like eight more minutes? Yeah, of course. Okay. Let's do it. Okay. I just wanted to talk about golden bachelor really quick. Yeah. Did you watch the second episode? No, but tell me. I'm going to watch it. So, okay. This first off, (laughs) they, they make it only an hour, not two hours like the normal bachelors, because I figure they think that these people only have so long to live. They're (laughs) like, let's get, we got to do these quick, but it is so sweet. You guys. And it is so, it makes you feel, I don't know. It really does 
make you appreciate humanity and love. And it, I like, it's kind of ruined the bachelor for me. I just want all golden bachelor yeah. now, but they, they, they have the first date and he takes this woman and, and he gets like this really cool, um, convertible car that they're driving in, but it's Gary's first time on a Los Angeles freeway. And it is one of the most scariest, like he's like, hi, well, I would, and he talks, he has this, another life voice. He was like, I was thinking I was going to die on the road. It was very scary on the road. And, and the lady, like her hair's whipping and she's like, and then he, she finally puts his, her arm around him in the car. And he's like, thank you. I needed that. I really appreciated that. And it is so sweet because it, it seems like this guy is a good guy. And it seems like these women are good women. And then they go to this like, like sock hop diner, which I'm like, that's weird. Stop. I've never seen that in Los Angeles. And then all of a sudden they do a fucking flash mob. And that's where I was like, no, fuck that. I'm out. No flash mobs. I hate a flat. And then they do it to don't stop believing by journey of like street. And then they make poor Gary and the lady dance. And, but this <laughs> Gary, he just makes my heart feel good watching. It makes my heart feel good watching this show. I know like amidst all of the cheating and the PR relationships and so on and whatever, like we have Gary and the golden bachelor ladies. And like, it's so wholesome. I just, it like makes me believe, like you said, in humanity again, and that everything ultimately will be all right. But if you've never been on an LA freeway. Like when I came here, that shit was scary. Oh, it's scary AF. as hell. Like, well, that's why I was cracking up is that they actually, he's like, I'm in fear of my life or my <laughs> life right now. And it was so sweet and so real. And they don't usually show that stuff. So I loved, I loved it. Golden Bachelor, I highly recommend. And I'm just so happy it's not like the regular Bachelor where Gary's like, I'm going to fuck all these ladies. Like exactly. he's not trying to hook up with every lady, every episode. Um, moving on. Uh, this was on your Instagram as well. A24, one of my favorite production companies, has optioned Paris Hilton's memoir, and they are making a docu series or no, a series about a series. this, not a docu series, an actual series. And I love that. And it's so weird to be at that part of pop culture in your lives where I was young when Paris Hilton came up, and now we're at a point 20 years later where now we're making a uh, series based on somebody's life. And I'm like, this is wild. It's just like yeah. one continuous pop culture circle. It's like kind of crazy to me. So I have some like, I, when I was in college, I had some girlfriends that were like American. So in the summers we would come to LA for two weeks and like visit her family and things like that. And so I have like the stories, like I was, you know, at Lay Do with like the Brody Jenners and the Lindsay Lohan yeah. and Sam Ronson and Paris Hilton. So and Joseph's so and all those crazy, places. Yeah. Like is to think that now like a docu series or a series about Paris Hilton's life in that time. Cause that time is so special to me. Cause it, that was I mean, really was the a time golden of, age. Yeah. Time of blackberries and, uh -huh. and flip phones and all of these things. Like, I mean, I was thinking about like LA in those times, you know, even just what was considered cool. You had Geisha house, which was like Ashton Kutcher and Wilmer, Wilmer Val Valderrama yeah. sushi restaurant on Hollywood. You had a, a nightclub called jet. You had a night, yes. like you had all these, the bolt house nightclubs that were huge. And it was so funny. The turnover, like Joseph's Ledoux, you know, and you had all these pop culture stories from there, which I should do a whole episode, like the Britney and Justin dance off after they had yes. broken off up with each other. They showed up at this one club and had a dance off supposedly, you know, that was in like the Britney Fred Durst era that <laughs> happened for a hot minute from Limp Biscuit. There's so many great stories. So if they could capture that for a series of actually take us into those nightclubs like Ledoux and like DJ yeah. AM and Nicole Richie and all of that, I would be so here for it because it really was a very special time, you know, it was when Us Weekly really ruled the newsstands. It was just really cool. It was really like, it It was like that weird moment right before social media. Like we had the internet, but there was no Instagram per se. There were like, yeah, it was the my dirty space. and what was it? Nikki Hilt, not Nikki Hilton. There was like all those like rag gossip websites, but it wasn't like, yeah. Instagram. Oh yeah. You know, it was like delisted. Uh, yes. all, I mean, it was really, I mean, Cobra Perez snake Hilton, was taking pictures everywhere. I mean, Perez, I would just refresh and cause I worked at a nightclub. In fact, I remember nightclub when, when Brandon Davis, remember yeah. Brandon did greasy bear, he was dating Misha Barton and they had sex in the upstairs bathroom at this nightclub that I managed back in the day. Like I remember letting Lindsay Lohan into our club underage. Like I was part of the problem. I remember <laughs> that, which by the way, 
uh, they're they're filming a Mean Girls commercial with Lindsay yes. Lohan and the cast of Mean Girls. It'll be a Super Bowl commercial. So that's exciting. I'm excited for that. Um, I'm, I'm happy to see, again, because I have such an affinity to that time, it's like, I'm happy to see Lindsay's character arc back on the rise. You know, she could have gone either way. Man, you like if you hang in there long enough, you got to be barnacles in this business. And finally, <laughs> yeah. Gigi Hadid and Bradley Cooper were spotted out. Gigi Hadid and Bradley Cooper. Do we believe now? Is this a PR relationship? It's very weird. He is much older than Gigi Hadid, but it seems like there's only a handful of celebrities in New York that you can date. And uh, Taylor's out for Bradley. So Bradley has his new movie Ma Maestro premiering very yep. soon uh, that he directed and starred in. And so he needs to elevate his PR presence potentially. Uh, is this Hadid romance real in any sort of way or were they just friendly on a walk together? Here's where I'm like getting, starting to lose my mind a little bit with all of these stories is it's like, could they, like, could they have just gone for dinner? Like, could it just be a dinner, a date, whatever? Like, why is it? Oh, they're in a relationship. Like, cause they were seen walking. Like, couldn't it have just been dinner? I don't know. I have no idea. It feels... Well, it I mean, feel I know if you are a celebrity, you have to realize people will spot you out. And, like, it's hard for me to even leave my house as is. Like, you know, mm -hmm. like, how easy it is to stay indoors with how much TV there? Like, the, <laughs> the fact that you actually made it out of your house and you're going to be walking with another celebrity, that, to me, if you didn't want that kind of attention... I mean, I don't know. I, I get all conspiratorial and I, I hate this part about myself, but that is when I question, like, is this a real relationship? It, and Bradley, you know, Irina Shayk, he has his daughter with. He's, you know, had a lot of rumored relationships uh, through the years and a lot of rumors yeah. about Bradley Cooper. But I just am curious in what sense of reality, and I'm sure we'll find out in the coming weeks, because if Maestro goes to the Oscars, which they're saying this is an Oscar bait yeah. movie, would Gigi Hadid go to the Oscars with Bradley Cooper? That would be insane. That would be insane. I do, to your point, think this was a let's be seen for the sake of getting my name out in the news cycle. I don't know if this is like a full-fledged relationship. And if it continues on, I feel like it could be PRE. Like, I just don't know. Like, I don't know. What do they, I mean, they, he used to date Irina. She's with, or was seen with Tom Brady now. Like, she, Gigi, you know, was dating. Oh Leo. yeah, what, Maybe happened, she wait, what happened to Irina and Tom? That seems like it's cooled off. We were getting new stories every so day and now it seems off. like it's cooled off. And then she was seemingly like back seen with Bradley on vacation. But I don't know if that was a co-parenting thing, but, but they, they were have like a they have a daughter, other. yeah. Yeah. Maybe Gigi and Bradley can connect on the fact that they both have children. Like, you know, she has what, a three-year-old now with Zane? Three or four? Yeah. Oh so my God, maybe, play dates. Yeah, I don't know. I have no idea. You, I just don't buy this I, one yet. I don't buy this one yet. You know what I love is that uh, the guy who wears a t-shirt over his head now that used to make music, he's <laughs> like in Italy with his new wife, Bianca Sensori, yeah. uh, Kanye Pest. Um, yeah. He, uh, I love the Daily Mail now does daily updates on Kanye. Like he, today he was spotted at a Starbucks having a Frappuccino with a t-shirt. Like he has the whole t-shirt on his head look. I'm just so over him. But it is interesting in terms of PR. Like I wonder if... Like, I wonder if his people try to push somewhat positive stories about him out there. And not, not that it's a positive of him. Like, it's still fucking weird watching yeah. Kanye with a T-shirt over his head drinking a Frappuccino. But it's not <laughs> him saying, like, I hate all Jews out there, which is, like, his normal bit. Correct. You know, like, I just wonder if that's a PR thing, too, of, like, can you push some news stories of Kanye just sipping on a Frappuccino, which is not, you know, a hate crime? Yeah. I mean, I think they... Whoever is still surrounding him is probably desperate to do some hardcore damage control. Because um, we also, you know, you want to see him being filmed drinking a Frappuccino, minding his business, because the last article we got was like, he doesn't let his quote unquote wife speak unless he lets her <laughs> yes, and she's only yeah. allowed to say yeah. certain things. So like, yeah. And I mean, the way that she's dressed, like this poor woman, I don't know if she's under duress. I don't know if she's like, no news is bad news. I'm going to be the next Julia Fox. Like, so I'm going to ride this out. I have no idea what's going on there, but it's like hard. It's got to be see. wild to get this version of Kanye, like to not get like the curse, this version of Kanye, like, you know, the version of Kanye that was dressing, you know, like he really was setting like a style, a yes. you know, a trend. And it was still like worked for like a lot of different like segments of society. And now it's like, yo, bro, I'm never going to wear a t-shirt on my head. And if I am, it's going to be a joke about you that I'm doing it. Like, so it's, it's wild. And I love that we, you know, it's like this man admittedly has mental health issues, yet we mm -hmm. all just still ignore this. He can just go off and get like a, a BJ on a, a, a boat in Venice and it's all, it's all gravy. 
like until the next thing, weird thing happens with them. Anywho, by the way, I could keep going on with you forever, but we have reached the end of our time. Lex, uh, tell us what, what do you got going on? What do you, uh, anything to, to look out for? Honestly, you? The listen. article find on our Instagram. It's great. Yes. Vogue articles on my Instagram and TikTok. I am my goal now to the end of the year. I'm just going to put this out there. I want to get to a hundred thousand followers on TikTok. Okay. I'm at like 94.995,000. Oh, you can get there. I'm just going to, that's like my main focus right now. So if you happen to be on TikTok, give me a follow at Lex Nico, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest at Lex Nico too. And I'm just out there doing the news. How often are you posting fit. on TikTok? Every day, pretty much, yeah. I see. I can't do it. I mean, it's too much going on. Like, I try to do one, and then like it'll be like, but then I just can't get into that habit of doing it every day. And then I just think everything I say is stupid. So it's like I judge myself too harshly to do it every. But you got to do it every day to build it, right? You really do. Sorry, the dog is barking now. We've come to okay. come to the end. The dog. We got to go. The but, dog's barking. Um, um, we definitely. You have to post every day very consistently, and you got to follow up with those video comments and things like that. But I enjoy it, and there's enough to talk about. You know, Taylor and Travis have kept us busy for the time being, and now I'm gonna go full deep on this Beckham thing. I, I made one video, but I'm like ready to go. I love it. So <laughs> I love, I love that Beckham documentary so much. I'm a sports girly now, Yay! as we talked about in the beginning, I'm very excited. Um, and Lex, uh, when I'm back in LA or if I'm, you're in New York. Oh, is that your mom? <laughs> yeah, she just went. Hi, this is Nico. Okay. Okay. Say okay. hi mom. <laughs> hi. Okay. Bye. <laughs>